Imagine a single bacterium swimming along collecting nutrients by itself. Eventually it will be time for it to reproduce, and it does so by cell division splitting itself evenly to produce two genetically identical daughter cells. These bacteria have exactly the same DNA and are made of the same stuff. Also, they're the same age and were raised in the same environment. These two bacteria are identical clones of each other, but there are differences between the two cells that arise at the molecular level. Within each of the bacteria exists an ocean of biomolecules. The chance interactions between molecules arising in this ocean produce many important phenomena including stochastic gene expression, which is a fancy term for noisy or random gene expression. To understand what stochastic gene expression is, let's start by reviewing our central biology. The core molecule that serves as information storage is deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. This is transcribed into messenger RNA, which serves as an intermediary information transfer molecule. Finally, the RNA is then translated into an amino acid sequence, which goes on to form a functional protein, which are the workhorses of the cell. We're all taught this so-called central dogma of molecular biology as a straightforward linear path, when in reality, gene expression can only be understood as a complex probabilistic phenomenon. Each step in gene expression depends on luck. The right molecules in the right place at the right time. Therefore, one gene does not produce the same number of proteins in each cell. Each gene produces a distribution of proteins. That means if you take a population of bacteria that grew by cell division and share exactly the same DNA, the individual cells all have different concentrations for a particular protein. Okay, that's the theory behind stochastic gene expression, but we can actually show this experimentally. For this, we typically use fluorescent reporter plasmids. Plasmids are circular pieces of DNA that we can engineer to contain whatever we want to. In this case, we put a fluorescent protein controlled by the promoter of a particular gene, so that whenever the gene fires, it will produce a fluorescent protein that we can visualize. We then put this plasmid into the bacteria, so that the brighter they glow, the more active they are for that particular gene. Starting from a single cell, we can grow up a microcolony of bacteria over time. Shortly into the experiment, we see differences in fluorescence begin to emerge. By the end, there exists a whole distribution of fluorescent levels, from dark to bright cells. Again, these bacteria have exactly the same DNA and are grown in exactly the same environment. More than just the pretty movies, this method can create important quantitative information. On the left, we see a growing microcolony, and on the right, Using computer vision, we've extracted the mean fluorescence values of each cell to show how they diverge over time. This method is not limited to a particular gene or even one gene at a time. All genes express a degree of stochasticity. But just because all genes are expressed stochastically doesn't mean it necessarily matters. What if all this noise is just superficial? The question is, is stochastic gene expression phenotypically meaningful? To give just one salient example, let's look at how stochasticity impacts how bacteria respond to antibiotics at the single cell level. Here we have cells transformed with a fluorescent reporter for the multiple antibiotic resistance activator, MAR-A. This gene is implicated in transient antibiotic resistance. Now, some cells are bright, corresponding to high concentrations of MAR-A, and some cells are dark, corresponding to low concentrations of MAR-A. When exposed to carbonicillin, some cells live and some cells die. It can appear to be random why a cell lives or dies, when in reality, we know that something about the underlying stochastic gene expression dictates whether the cell lives or dies in carbonicillin. Looking at hundreds of cells shows that higher levels of MAR-A correlate with a higher survivorship. Therefore, these random differences in MAR-A produce functional results. Dosing a population multiple times with antibiotics shows that cells can become susceptible again and recover the same heterogeneity that existed prior to antibiotic exposure. In other words, this is not a mutation, it's just random fluctuations in expression patterns. So to answer the question, stochastic gene expression is phenotypically meaningful. It can make the difference between whether a cell lives or dies. 
Together, we've shown the theory behind stochastic gene expression and how it can be tested experimentally. Randomness in gene expression is omnipresent, and cells must learn to control and exploit it, or be controlled and exploited by it. Chance dictates gene expression, and by extension, cell fate. Thank you all very much for watching. This subject is far more complex than I had the chance to get into in this video, but if you're interested, follow the links below in the description for all the literature I cited to make this video. Stochastic gene expression is the subject of my PhD, and if you like this video, I plan on making a few more, ranging from topics on synthetic biology to information theory for biological systems. So please, hit that subscribe button if this was your jam, and I hope to see you in the next one.